Uh, anyway, uh, the question is, is this, what kind of performance do you expect from the PS5 Pro? 2x FPS in GPU limited scenarios? Can we expect a classic in, uh, rich in theory video on this like he did for PS4 Pro? Uh, now when everybody seems to align regarding the specs. Um, I guess I could do a video on that, right? I mean, we, we, we kind yeah. of know that it's got 60 CUs um, out of 64 uh, on the die. Um, what we don't know is the secret source. Um, there was that, you know, the whole checkerboarding hardware that went into 4 Pro. And, um, but, you know, thinking back to that in theory video I did, I don't think it was too far off the mark, which was to say that certain games you could run at like, you know, 1620p, even higher, but a lot of games just ran best at 1440p, which is exactly where the PS4 Pro <laughs> landed for the most part. All those sort of um, games that didn't have a huge amount of investment into their pro versions. And I suspect it right. might be the same here because um, 2x FPS in a GPU limited scenario, uh, you haven't got 2x the CUs this time. You might get a, a boost to the to the clock speeds, but I think it way well be down to the secret source and whether this uh, upscaling solution that Sony is allegedly doing actually pans out. But that was something we actually, Alex, we talked about in um, uh, DF Indirect, which is the patent that's been going mm -hmm. around regarding Sony's um, uh, upscaling, yeah, upscaling technologies or experiments, which, you know, didn't seem to amount to much <laughs> in, in yeah. all honesty. Yeah, I think 2X performance in a gpu limited scenario the reason why i don't like saying that always is because like you said not every aspect of the chip is going to be 2x better no likely, memory right? bandwidth certainly won't be yeah that's the one thing that i immediately thought of like not every case is so a lot of things is like there's always this like there's also with the fact that like you're sharing this with the CPU too, and the CPU is such a limiting factor here. It's really hard to get a grasp, I think, at what exactly it will mean for games. You could do it in theory video for sure, based upon the hardware you have access to right now mm. on the AMD side of things, assuming it's already in A3 and Yeah, whatever. big assumptions there. Yeah, but, you know, like, I feel like if you just in vacuum drop that in a really high-powered C CPU system... It could maybe even rep misrepresent to a slight degree what is possible, especially since like if the, 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 the amount of VRAM stays the same too. Just doubling performance is not always in a in a purely GP limited scenario. It's not always so wholly interesting as adding in transformative experiences like path tracing or yeah real RT etc. So, and I always feel like this is a hard one. I think waiting a little bit longer till we get more info could be really beneficial yeah. to a potential the, the, the crucial thing we, here is like the clock speed of the gpu mm -hmm. in terms of this uh theoretical 2x um fps john what would you actually want from a ps5 pro because there's you know it's kind of thin pickings really there's no display upgrade that that really warrants it but at the same time, we are seeing some distressingly low resolutions on uh, current generation games targeting 60 fps well, that's just it, isn't it? The the resolution numbers, especially as Unreal Engine 5 starts to become used more frequently, they're worryingly low. And it does have an impact on image quality, even at a reasonable distance. And I think that I'm hoping, at least, that something like the PS5 Pro can kind of come along and hopefully clean that stuff up, maybe smooth out some of the rough edges in performance, uh, given that developers will still be targeting the older machines that should lead to a smoother, better experience all around for PS5 Pro, rather than any sort of like meaningful, gigantic visual difference. It's basically just like swapping a new GPU in your PC, which right. I think at this point we're kind of okay enough with that model. Yeah, I mean it would be it would be a digital foundry console. I can't see it being a massive appealing factor yeah, to, yeah, the, yeah. to the mainstream. It's not going to change the fortunes of the PlayStation Five life cycle in any meaningful way. Um, because it is just an, an iter you know, it, obviously the games will look better, but it is an iterative upgrade, more so, I think, than the PS4 Pro was, because there was a legitimate target display yeah. that was meaningfully better than what was already out there. 
but like in terms of so the interesting thing is in terms of like if i were advising someone to make a pc build and they had like a uh like let's say a, a radeon rx 6700 and they wanted to get like a 7800 xt i would advise them against it i would say wait a little bit longer or get a different brand of gpu at that point you know what i mean like to get like a revelatory difference for the amount of money you're expanding mm. like there. I don't know. That's just me. Okay. 